I mean, welcome aboard the news review segment. Mm. <laughs> and, well, uh, guess who joins us this morning? It's a Wednesday morning. Dr. Kwame Asan, Asante, political scientist, also director of the Center for European Studies. He will be with us shortly, but I don't know. What do you make of yesterday's mm. demonstration and how everything panned out across the length and breadth of the country? So from all the reports that came in yesterday across the 16 regions, it appears it was a peaceful protest, mm. except that isolated incident in Kumase. Mm. What I found curious was the rapt response with which the Ghana Police Service issued a statement. I was here um, anchoring the midday news, and then we had Nana Bwachi Dan mm. you know, file that report. In fact, it took us live through that chaotic scene in Kumase. Mm. And so not only him, some of the eyewitnesses spoke about rubber bullets, <coughs> um, a police woman being injured, and so on and so forth. But the statements denied all that and said it was just one person who was injured. There was no talk about the woman, who our reporter clearly said he saw. Mm. And she was, use his words, really down. So what's the... What accounts for the inconsistencies in the reportage and the police service is saying that we, the media, should be circumspect. I found that very curious. And I don't know what explanation is there um, that they, they can offer in all of that. But I think the NDC succeeded in um, letting their voice be heard. The numbers that poured out on the streets yesterday was also quite impressive. And it wasn't just sympathizers of the party. Some um, well-meaning Ghanaians also joined the protest to say that electoral commission if you have nothing to hide <laughs> let's conduct a forensic audit but benjamin i don't know what you made of the situation i mean i the probably the most paramount thing for me was peace that it would be peaceful whatever demonstration happens the, i guess that's the the most basic thing you're looking for peace and i think that was achieved uh, i didn't want perhaps scenes where people would get injured uh, having taken up the responsibility or the decision to exercise their natural, <laughs> or you should say, well, these are constitutional rights, right? So on that level, it was, it was great for me, apart from the skirmishes in Kumasi. And it, I mean, we have to denounce that for what it is. Those who participated in it, trying to push into the Electoral Commission, uh, pelting the police officers with stones and all of that, that is simply not the way to go. And that, is, that was not the mandate. That was not what they were told to do. So uh, while you may say that, oh, it is one out of how many demonstrations, only one a pocket of it, it is still important to talk about it. Election, we should get to the point where demonstrations are free of any violence because whether you know sometimes we talk about it a lot when it is the police and someone has been injured by the police mm. in the same way if a police officer is also injured through the pelting of stone by some of these people we must be vociferous on it so that we have to get that psyche where demonstrations can be peaceful you make your point you present your petition you go home in fact, Accra <coughs> the group in Accra demonstrated that they were walking quite lackadaisically, just taking a sweet time to get there, mm. making stops intermittently. <coughs> At some point, I, Maxwell Agonga <coughs> was reporting and showed us how the police were waiting on the people to move. And yeah. some people were saying that it's a demonstration. We are just going to present a petition. We don't need to rush there for any reason. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Peace is the goal. And I think that uh, a good job was done. Mm. Ghana Police Service actually ensured that these protesters were safe and reached their target's locations. And, and we salute them piece. and also um, are grateful to them <clears throat> that yesterday, <clears throat> even with the altercations in Kumasi, they did not get yeah. physical, too physical, I should say, with uh, the demonstrators. They, oh, the, the Ghana, I need to chip this the Ghana police got a, a dirty, a dirty ah, blow or something uh, like that. Uh, and some, some uh, of his and members those who were gun shotted. Those who were gun shotted. <laughs> 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 it made for interesting scenes. A dirty slap, yeah, gun shotted, well, and man. gun shotted, in quotes. Yeah. Interesting, interesting <laughs> times. Well, let's bring in uh, Dr. Kwame Asasanti. He joins us via the phone lines today. Doc, Yamawache, good morning. Yeah, we are. Good morning. Good morning mm -hmm. to, to Yeah. We've started yeah. talking about the demonstration. I don't know whether you have any thoughts, but you could add that, if uh, any different, to your thoughts that you'd like to share with us this morning. And then Sweetie will usher us into the newspapers. 
Yes, I think I, I want to look at the demonstration. Um, I think uh, it's constitutionally mandated uh, or given uh, to every human being in this country that you are by law qualified to demonstrate. If you think that there is something you need to um, exhibit that type of uh, behavior, uh, provided you do it within the framework of the law. And that is exactly what we saw yesterday. NDC organized themselves well, um, with the exception of uh, that uh, little um, problem in Kumasi. I think everything went well. Um, it tells you that uh, people are very aware of the need to have a peaceful demonstration at all times. I also commend the police for professional manner in which they handled the demonstrated. Um, I am hopeful that this will not end here. Anytime we're going to have demonstration, it's my hope and prayer that we will have a peaceful demonstration and people will be able to what, uh, exercise that constitutional you know, um, right given to them uh, by the uh, constitution. And then whatever message they want to share, they will be able to what, bring it to the fore. That is all that we need in a democracy, that the law is first and foremost uh, the first port of call, and that once you get that basis right, any other thing will follow. Mm. Thank you so much, Doc, for those thoughts. Let's get right into the newspapers. I'll start with the Daily Guide on the front page on election 2024. 24 file for president. Ghana Knowledge Skills Bank portal launched. And the UK announces £1.9 million supports for Ghana, Nigeria. Ghana loses tech guru Chinri Hesse. And on the NDC demonstration, protesters, police clash in Kumasi. And we're just getting into that. But let me see what the paper captured on page three. A chaotic scene unfolded in Kumasi yesterday as police clashed with protesters of the opposition National Democratic Congress, resulting in injuries and arrests. The nationwide demonstration organized by the NDC aimed to express discontent over the Electoral Commission's alleged handling of the irregularities in the Provisional Voters Register. And I think it's the same um, story that we're telling you this morning. Eyewitnesses reported that the situation escalated when protesters breached the police barricades near the Ashanti Regional Coordinating Council, shattered off his glass doors of the EC and injured a female police officer. So that's that. Let me get to the 24 persons who filed for president ahead of election 2024, and I'll come to you. Now, the presidential election is heating up with a whopping 24 candidates filing their nominations to contest the top spot. At the end of the September 13 deadline, the people who are a diverse pool include candidates from political parties and independents, with three women in contention for the number one top job. The Electoral Commission has sold nomination to, had sold nominations to 39 aspirants, comprising top political parties and 27 independent candidates, but only 24 made the cut by the deadline. We know reports of some people who arrived late on that September 13 deadline. The EC accepted their documents but said it would not file it because they, had, you know, they were too late to, to, to file. But, Doc, we have 24 people so far filed for presidential, um, the top job, Office of the President. Your quick thoughts on that. Yeah, it's an interesting development. Interesting in the sense that uh, one would have thought that we are going to have about um, a few people. But that number is very, very uh, interesting, 24. Mm. Yes. Um, it gives you an idea as to whether Ghanaians are really interested in the duopoly that we are experiencing. For that matter, they really uh, want to go on their separate ways without joining forces with any political party. That is one of the interpretations. Uh, so that is why they are not with any political party, but they are there as independent members who want to express independent ideas and all that. It also uh, gives you the fact that maybe uh, the, 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 the requirement uh, for uh, becoming an independent candidate is uh, not that 
um, set that is able to sieve out those who are really qualified and those who are not. And for that matter, uh, that is why people have uh, the courage to file the way they want. And then the last one will also uh, be that uh, our democracy is gaining acceptance and becoming attractive to people that mm. they really uh, want to show themselves on the ballot and then contest because after all, the constitution gives them the right to vote and be voted for. So they are contesting and all that. Mm. All in all, mm. you want to extend the conversation to find out whether these independent candidates or smaller parties uh, will be able to make the mark in the election. It is not enough to file and become an independent candidate. But that, what is it that you are going to what, deliver? Are you going to deliver the votes that will give you a certain position within the political space? And that is a million dollar question that I will them. Right. From where I sit, mm. I believe that the answer is no. Because okay. over the years, mm. research has shown that from 1992 to 2020, all the political parties, the smaller ones, put together, they've not been able to cross even 5%, let alone meet the thresholds of 50% and beyond. So uh, these are my thoughts on that. So, Doc, they might not be able to win, but I think, I mean, at the rate at which we are going, they might be able to make some significant strides to tip the scale, maybe. But let me that just... Is, that yeah. is true. If yeah. they are able to, um, you know, all of them, their performance put together is able mm. to go beyond 4%, then they are likely to put the election, push the election to a second round. Yeah. Can they do that this time around? Okay. Two quick stories um, from the Daily Guide newspaper. NDC MP scatters drip commissioning event. A shocking incident unfolded in Gomwa West in the central region yesterday during the commissioning of equipment for the district's road improvement project, that is DRIP, as Richard Jan Mensah, the National Democratic Congress Member of Parliament for the area, stormed the site to disrupt the occasion. Leading an army of party supporters, the MP allegedly pulled out a gun and hit one of the operators on the forehead with a butt. The altercation allegedly began over disagreement about displaying NPP parliamentary candidate Bismarck Incomes images on the newly commissioned drip machinery. And this is like the third incident that we're, you know, catching wind of about the pictures of either the president, the vice president, or parliamentary candidate or member of parliament on this drip, uh, these equipment that are supposed to be for the local uh, residents and for the use of the communities. If it's for us, I mean, I get that it's an election year, and so it's also part of their strategy to show you that they're doing something. But should we really be displaying photos and party flags and panafrenaria, you know, on equipment that is supposed to be for residents in this politically charged environment or climate that we are in. Doug? Yeah, that is exactly what we refer to as incumbency abuse. If you are going to do something on behalf of the people, there's no point, you know, displaying your party symbols on them. Then you will anger the other uh, groups in the sense that their money has gone into that thing. And why, at this point in time, you want to advertise it for one political party, leaving the rest of the people who contributed uh, to making of the thing? Uh, these are some of the aberrations in the campaign, and we believe that going forward, uh, the political actors will take note and act rightly. We don't want incidents in the campaign. We want campaign driven with ideas, driven with what? Solutions and all that. That is all that we need. So violence and then irregularities, they undermine the democratic process. And more so, they affect what? Or they throw away uh, the free and fair election. Free and fair election, we are talking about elections devoid of irregularities. Devoid of irregularities. That mm. at the end of the day, those who win are congratulated, uh, congratulated. And then those who lose accept the defeat of the game and abide accept the defeat and abide by the rules of the game. So I believe that uh, these are things we don't want. We want incident-free election, election that is devoid of all these things so that we don't throw away the free and fair nature of uh, the Thank election. you, Doug. Benjamin. 
Well, let's get into some other stories. And uh, I'll start with the Daily Graphic uh, newspaper. Galamse fight government labor meeting fruitful information minister uh, discloses. Ghana Knowledge and Skills Bank uh, launched. There is also Fishers want premix fuel subsidy removed. That's according to a study. Thousands of NDC faithful press demand for voters register audit. So let's start from the very start. The ad hoc. Uh, ministerial committee set up by the president to address illegal mining in the country has assured members of the public that a lasting solution will be found to tackle the challenge head on. This followed a crunch meeting with organized labor yesterday, with uh, which the Minister of Information, Fatima, to, or Fatima Abubakar, described as very fruitful and encouraging. The almost three hour meeting was attended by the Minister of National Security, Albert Kandapa, who uh, leads the committee, Lands and Natural Resources Minister Samuel uh, Abu. Jinapo, or is it Abdullahi Jinapo? Sometimes I get it twisted. So Samuel Jinapo. Defense Minister Dominic Nito, Employment, Labor Relations and Pensions Minister Ignatius Bafwewa, and the Information Minister. Although the meeting was held behind closed doors, a highly placed source told the Daily Graphic that representatives of organized labor reiterated previous demands to tackle the Galamse menace, which included a ban on all forms of small scale mining, uh, declaration of state of emergency, and reforms to some mining laws. Uh, those are some of the pertinent details from that uh, story. On the international front, uh, Mali says, we've thwarted terrorist attack. Four Namibian children have been trapped in a freezer and unfortunately they are dead. They are aged between three and uh, six. There's also, <clears throat> Fishers want premix fuel subsidy uh, removed. It, the start of the story is on page 13. Let me quickly go there. About 91% of fishers sampled across the coastal communities have agreed to the total removal of subsidies on premix fuel meant to ease the burden on them. According to preliminary findings of the study, the fishers maintain that the government should rather channel the funds used for the subsidies to provide alternative livelihoods for young people across the fishing communities. Also, Per the findings of the study conducted by the Environment and National Resource uh, Research Initiative, the current regime had created a system where the product was diverted or hoarded for the benefit of a few people rather than making it accessible to many artisanal fisher folk and for that reason must be deregulated to promote fairness and equality in uh, the market. And, um, that's the thrust of that. The final bit I'll look at, thousands of NDC faithful press demand for voters register audit. We've already got into that story, so I'm not going to uh, belabor that point. Any points of interest for you, Dr. Azasanti, that you'd like to share? I'll look at the ad hoc ministerial committee and the work they are doing. Right. Fine. They've started that well. Uh, but it is my hope that they will be able uh, to look at the problem in detail and find lasting solution now, 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 now. Mm. Uh, I don't want to see a situation where they drag their feet only for the election to pass and then before they come out with something. Uh, they, 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 did, they need to do that now so that we'll find a uh, solution because the threat uh, from the activities of the Galamse uh, is too much for us to bear, especially when we're looking at a production of potable water mm. and uh, the effect of Galamse on arable lands and then its uh, effect on agricultural production, particularly coal and the rest of them. Uh, I'm not sure that they want to work, slow down because, look, uh, we mean business and uh, the way uh, Dumso happened in the 2016 and its impact on the election, I have no doubt in my mind that we are going to see similar, uh, you know, pattern in this election where Galamsey and its activities is going to impact seriously on voter choices. So I expect them <coughs> to be able uh, to look at this problem and deal with it once and for all. All right. Uh, thank you very much for that. Let's quickly get into some other papers, sweetie. 
Yeah, but I just want to chip in this story on the back page of the Daily Guide briefly before I move on to the Accra Times. It says, CAF chief expresses worry over teams playing away from home. And it is coming on the back of CAF's ban, uh, or banning Ghana from hosting home matches at the Babayara Sports Stadium, the country's only approved venue due to the, due to the poor condition of the pitch. So we are worried about that. The Accra Times on the front page, let peace and security be your guide. Information Minister urges um, journalist Mahama Val's action on energy sector under NDC government. Parliament beats executive judiciary to win best audit award. And on the back page of this paper, <clears throat> okay, the story of Mahama vowing to um, take action on energy sector under his new NDC government in here. Inside the paper... Uh, let me touch a bit on this story from the information minister saying that journalists should act ethically and prioritize the peace, security and stability of Ghana in their reportage as the nation approaches the December 7 general election. Um, let me just run through the other papers I have, the stories on the front page quickly so that we get an idea of what's um, making news. On the news center, Baumia Mahama in tight race, according to a survey, Government to release 200 million Ghana CDs to NHF to build more houses. No end in sight for CDs woes. And Natoshi grabs excellence in governance award. Yeah, I was there at that event and it was a beautiful ceremony. That is Glitz um, Women of the Year Honors Award. Asasi Broadcasting Company launches Asasi Pa 1.0 to redefine Akan language. And NDC holds nationwide demonstration to demand <coughs> like a pardon, forensic audits of voters. And then there's Kodio revealing low presence of NDC and PP agents at voter exhibition exercise. But I'm curious, though, today's that IEA debate. Who is showing up? Doc, any quick reflection? Or Ben, do you want to add your papers to it before? No, Doc can reflect. I have one major issue I'll run by okay. him. So, Doc. I am worried about uh, the FIFA reaction towards uh, the the condition of our facilities media in this country. Very, very unfortunate. You recall, uh, before the AFCON, I think 2008, President Kufuor did a lot by helping us with a lot of what, uh, structures to help uh, in the, 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 this area of sports. So we had a lot of uh, uh, stadia. Uh, today, to the extent that uh, the, 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 the the, the facility in terms of quality has gone down and that only one is fit for purpose. It's a worrisome uh, uh, issue for me, uh, given the fact that we put in a lot of resources uh, to put up these structures. And at the end of the day, if it is, this is how we will handle it and leave it to what rot, then uh, we need to take a second look at how we maintain public facility. If you read the Constitution, there's a certain provision which uh, I can uh, bring out on top of my head right now. But it tells you that you are what we are required to protect public property. Is that what we are doing? I mean, if we run away from these things, obviously, uh, we will uh, destroy our own uh, system. And then at the end of the day, we will incur more costs. The money that we could have used in other areas will be channeled uh, to repair these things and it, it will not help anybody. I believe that we need to act as citizens, not spectators, as if this facility doesn't belong to us. It belongs to us and we need to protect it at all times. Thank you. Right, uh, Doc, so a very quick one. I'll take you, well, first, that's not the story uh, I'll do, but... Presidential race too close to call. That's a survey. Actually, I'll get into that. Uh, that's the Custodian newspaper. Then Mahama on insulting spree. President chiefs, pastors, imams not spared. Uh, that's what the Custodian newspaper says. But the Ghanaian publisher, where I'm going to focus, no one-touch victory for Baumia Mahama. That's according to, a, according to a survey. This survey, by the way, was conducted by the Office of the President. The Office of the President conducted the survey. What I find interesting, though they talk about uh, going to all 276 constituencies or 275, depending on the wh whichever way you want to look at it. And uh, then talking about including views from over 25,000 voters. Uh, they are not saying 
the MPP is going to win. They are saying it is neck and neck. Interestingly, that both the NDC, John Romani Mahama and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, are going to get 46.3%. According to the, the presidency's uh, survey, which I found rather curious, as a political scientist and me as a student of political science, you know what it means when a party in power tells you that they are neck and neck with the party trying to wrest yes. power from their grip. If you know, you know what that means. The EIU, Global Info Analytics and all others uh, say, apart from some of the, the other aligned ones, say the NDC is uh, in poor position to win. But what do you make of this recent survey from the office of the president? That's my last Yeah, question. it was very interesting yesterday to learn from your station uh, that publication uh, that the result shows that they are neck and neck. <laughs> it tells you that um, then the government is in a very difficult position because all the time governments uh, abuse incumbency and they take on due advantage of that and then uh, win election. So if in all, in spite of all this, the government is now in uh, a position that is like a par with the NDC, uh, which is the dominant part, then obviously they are in very difficult uh, situation. And for me, another interesting aspect of that survey was the fact that they said, you know, scandals uh, are going to undermine the fortunes of the government. <laughs> the scandals are coming, and uh, we continue to add to the existing scandal. So all these things are going to weigh heavily uh, on the fortunes of the Polka Party. There's no doubt about that. And that means that if they really want to turn their fortunes around, they need to work extra, extra, extra hard because the bad information they have shared out, it is clear in my mind that they've given a comfortable lead uh, to the NDC. But uh, since we are not there yet, I think uh, the two parties who you know, have to look at the information very well and work extremely hard if you are winning so that you win convincingly. If you are also struggling to win, you put in a lot of effort to be able to cross the finish line. So right. it's a, a lot of work uh, for the two parties. But for me, it points to the fact that government, uh, the ruling party, is uh, struggling for breath. Well, the Ghanaian publisher adds this story. Irregularities in voters registered deliberate. That's according to the NDC. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to get into that story. But Dr. Asan Asante, we're grateful, so grateful that you took the time to join us uh, this morning. We wish you a wonderful day, sir. May your day be smooth. I wish everybody a good day. All right. And of course, uh, you want to also stay with us because after sports, we'll be getting into those conversations, starting with the NDC's Enough is Enough demonstration. And uh, our guests will be joining on that. I don't know. Uh, how, how much are you looking forward to that conversation? I'm looking forward to it um, so much because, I mean, it's the fallout of everything we saw yesterday. Mm. And I'm looking to see what our guests have to say about that. So, right. yeah, please stick and stay with us. We'll be back after sports.